Welcome to Botching It Up. This is the podcast where we hope we don't botch up an entire program as poorly as Natalia botched up her retirement speech. Uh, you're with me, Benito, and my good pal, Basil. My brothers. I got pal wrong last week. That's why I pronounced this. So. You say, I, I mean, I say pale. You said, no, I said no, pale yeah, last no, week. Yeah, but I have problems when I say tail. I meant to see, I just meant tail there. <laughs> I can't do it. Anyway, so I can't apparently move. I can't say uh, pal. Just stop saying I'm it. just going to say friend. Sick bro. Co-worker. Yeah. Gentleman to my right. Some, some guy yeah. that's in this room with me. Shake it all Anyway, about. so this entire episode is pay-per-view special. You said um, that in such an excited manner. Well, I'm excited for today's show. Maybe not the show we're talking about. Uh, Clash of Champions 2017. Uh, was it fun for you? It wasn't anything to me. It was just kind of there. It was kind of there. Not good, nor bad. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way to the top. Pre-show. Yes. Did you um, watch the whole thing? No, you're going to... No, no, nothing happened. You're going to be disappointed with me. I didn't watch the whole... I watched the match. That was it. Yeah, well, I watched... Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Yeah. There wasn't anything there. Just hype, yeah. But did you? Where did you start the pre-show the match. from? The actual match. I just watched the match. That was See it. now, what you missed here mm-hmm. is that Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder got its own four-minute hype video. Okay. When have you ever seen that on a pre-show? Oh, for a pre-show match, that's that's some. And not only was it just a a, a hype video on a pre-show, but it was a really good hype video. I think I have a I have a conspiracy theory about this. Okay. Um, I think that Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder was originally supposed to be on the main card. Wow. But they thought... But who they switched it with? Or they just ran out I of think time? They, I think they switched it with the Bludgeon Brothers. Oh, that, yeah, that makes sense. I think the Bludgeon Brothers were supposed to be on the pre-show. That could have been a pre-show match. Sorry, kick-off. Kick-off match. Um, but yeah, but this was a kick-off match as well, to be honest. It was a bit... It was okay. Yeah. But I, well, I've also read that um, Mojo Rawley is in line for a... Long heel push, mid card heel push. Yeah, well, I've, I've I've I wrote down here that uh, Mojo was playing the heel way too much. Like he's been told out there, he's like, you got to be an over the top heel. Yeah, he looked like it. He didn't. It didn't quite click to him. Like the idea of, that it can sometimes be subtle. Yeah, it just went over the top yeah. or nothing at all. Yeah, um, he tried his hardest to build up some heat from the crowd. Like he was really trying hard. Yeah. Um, you could cl- also you could clearly see that Mojo thought this was his moment, whereas Ryder seemed completely lethargic. Couldn't give a toss. Yeah, he didn't seem to care, did he? I, I, he's set for life, man. He's probably yeah. So um, the ending of that match was some like I guess a new finisher for him maybe, like that brutal. He ran across the ring. Uh, Ryder was hung up on the ropes. He ran across the ring and came back and with like I think it was meant to be an elbow, but he hit it with his forearm. But I think it was like there's some Japanese fucking hard style elbow right across his face, knocking him out. Yeah, see, I, so I saw this, um, but I've seen Mojo Rawley so rarely on TV that I'm not sure whether he's just had this finisher for ages or not. I don't think so. I think it's new. I imagine it's new if it's a heel you're, turn. You're a Mojo guy, right? Yeah, but I haven't watched. At one of his matches, I think, since WrestleMania. I swear you popped when he won that Andre the Giant Battle Royal. You liked that. I did. You were the only person. Well, well but, you and Mojo. Well, because I wanted Braun to win it, and then when Braun was out, I was like, well, the next guy. But why Why do you cling on to Mojo? I don't. I gave up on him way up. But you had long, a thing for Mojo ago. for a while. No, I, I like the hype bros. I like the tag team, because what? I've always been a Zack Ryder fan. Oh, <laughs> This is probably why we don't get along. <laughs> Zack Ryder is not. A, I've never under. Honestly, I've never understood people that like him. It's the, the, the and to, the, to for you to say that to me is like an unhidden truth that I'd just rather not know. It's like an unpleasant truth that you've just shown me. So anyway, anyway this match now. Simple match, but the crowd were into it. I gave it. Um, I gave it a solid two. I also gave it a solid two. Yeah. So it went seven minutes and sixteen seconds. Okay. And. Um, you said the crowd were very into it. Well, they got into it. But Jesus Christ, I felt so sorry for this crowd tonight. Okay. They were the loudest crowd I've heard in a very long yeah, time. Yeah, I was going to say this to you. The best thing about the show was the crowd. Yeah. They were crazy and they were just, they were. You don't see crowds like that. Sometimes you're watching amazing wrestling and th- there's just there's just silence. There's nothing, yeah. Tonight, you were, you had a crowd that were, go, were willing to go crazy for just about anything. And yeah. they were 
given shit. I had this note. I think I had this note on um, the Brazango Golden Brothers squash that um, this is the best crowd I've seen in a long time. Yep. And I didn't catch what's... I know you must know what city they're in. Cause you probably, Boston, Massachusetts. I said what... Ah, okay. John Cena's they're, hometown. They're, but they're also in WWE's backyard. Yeah. But I said whatever whatever city they're in, they need to be there for Mania. Yeah, because I can that imagine. crowd was crazy. Anyway, so uh, the main show opened up with the United States Championship match: uh, Bobby Roode versus Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler for the US Championship. For the US Championship, Corbin comes in champion. Ziggler walks out champion. <sighs> I, Thoughts on that? I, I, Why? I, I don't understand this at all. Um, so you've got Baron Corbin, who's been Retained, f- I mean, he's had some flops with Cena and the like, but he, as US champion, he's retained pretty much a steady rhythm. Yeah. Um, they've been going steady with him. Bobby Roode has been really booked well, um, and he is very, very popular right now. I thought he was going to win. He does win. It doesn't, it doesn't matter wherever he goes, people react to him. I, You thought you had him predicted. I him. had him to predict as to win. I had... Uh, Baron Corbin, we were both wrong. To retain, yeah, we were both wrong. And I just feel like this putting on it on Ziggler was just a wild card. Like, oh, you weren't expecting that, were you? Because it, it didn't make any sense. I got another just, theory about that. He's come out of nowhere. I think um, this is Ziggler's last run. Uh, what on Ziggler's behalf or WWE's? Well, either way, I think this is his last run before he's gone. Good riddance. <laughs> no, to be honest with you, he doesn't you, entertain me at all. Good riddance. So, I I don't like the guy. I I he thi- because it's not just a gimmick. When he says I'm the greatest wrestler in the world and I'm ignored, he actually thinks it. he actually thinks that. And he goes on Twitter and he's he's been moaning about having a job with the WWE for the last five six years. He's not as good as he thinks he is. No. He bumps over the top. I don't like him. I've never liked him, and he hasn't got any charisma. Go away to TNA. <laughs> he annoys me. So, the actual match... Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, this was the thing. Ziggler's entrance was pretty cool. Super heel. And when that happened, there was me thinking, ah, shit. That's... Whenever someone gets the best entrance, there's always a sign that they're the ones winning. I didn't think about that, but yeah. I know, I always know... Now, because of NXT and TNA used to do it a lot as well. When someone has the best entrance, a lot of the time, they're the ones getting the push. Mm. Um but then Bobby Roode's entrance was awesome, so I, I was thrown off a bit. I thought maybe. Um, one note I got is that in this match there were two heels and one guy that works better as a heel than a face. And he was playing the face. Uh, he was playing the face. <laughs> um, so there, it was a bit. That was a bit of a tough one, I thought, story wise. Yeah. But the actual match was solid. The crowd were absolutely Again, into it. Again, the crowd were amazing. They, uh, they were into everything. When was the last time you saw a, the crowd into a Baron Corbin match? <laughs> you know? Ever. And I like Baron Corbin. Um, I thought it... I, 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 this is just a, a little... A tiny problem, really. I thought they, they used the triple threat gimmicks a little too much. You yeah. know, like the two people fighting while the third's knocked out. Yeah. And the double suplex that you know they always do that double suplex. That I'm yeah. so sick of seeing that. <laughs> um, but I thought it was good. I thought it was a good opener, uh, and it was much better. They delivered a match that was much better than the build up. It was a match much better than I expected. Yeah. Um, Which I, is I was I, actually super into the ending. I was yeah actually, yeah yeah that last fin- final flurry. And was I was really actually good. like screaming at the TV for Bobby to root to win. So. Even if I say I didn't care about the match, I must have cared somewhat because I, w- I was literally screaming before Richard Rude died. I was pissed when he didn't he didn't get the, the count. Did you notice also, though, um, Rude, and, Rude and Corbin looked good in this match. They looked a lot better than Dolph. Yeah, I really don't know why he won. It's very confusing. I don't understand it. But there you go. So um, Ziggler, That went t- 12 minutes 45 seconds. And Ziggler finally got the pin over Corbin. Which keeps Bobby Roode a little bit more strong. That's fair enough. Because fuck Corbin, I guess. I uh, Corbin, Corbin just takes the the hit now. Is is regularly. It so I, I gave that a two as well. I gave that a three and a quarter. Wow. All right. I did well. I did. I think the ending ruined the score for me. Yeah. Well, I'm just feeling the quality of the match. Okay. I mean, I they they all work very well together, and they built up the psychology naturally from start to finish um, it's one of the best things on the show yeah to be honest with you 
Okay. I'm interested to hear your perspective on this next match. The tag team match? Yeah. Uh, Aiden English and Rusev versus Benjamin and Gable versus the New Day versus the Usos. Usos are champions. Fatal four way for the Usos. Usos, Usos walk in champions. Usos walk out champions. Yes. Go cool. On yes. That. yes. Very happy. That, with that, that needed to happen. Uh, the crowd was surprisingly super into Rusev when he got announced. Rusev is over. That Rusev he, Day stuff is over. Yeah. Even Aiden English was getting. Yeah. Well, he finishes his song. Um. And Rusev is like... Rusev was on Kirk, right? <laughs> what? Well, what? you can't just assume that. Yeah, but did you see him, like, walk around the ring while this was hat? Like, there was some real, like, hype there. Like, he was on it. Anyway. Um, I, I think I think Alien English is getting over. Well, no, what I was going to say, I liked how um, everybody was mental for Rusev Day. And then, at one point, Aiden English tried to get a cheer for himself. And it, it died yeah. down a bit. And so he went, then he went back to Rusev and everybody went crazy. And the Usos come out talking as well and it's all great. Uh, so then we start with the actual match and what the fuck? <laughs> why can't it just be... Why can't we just have a normal... Ta- I love tag matches. I love this, tag teams. What the fuck was this? This was... This was so chaotic. Now, they, they weren't able to tell any story or build up anything. So I thought... Anything. I thought it was going to be a four corners elimination. Yeah, kind of traditional, yeah. So it was, let me read this out, it was uh, a traditional, this makes no sense, a traditional four-man, a four-way tag team tornado match. Which makes no sense, right? Because the tornado match is meant to be they're all in at the same time. A four-man traditional tornado match. Tra- traditional four-way a tornado tra- tag team match. A traditional four-way tornado tag team match. Yeah. You know what? It was yeah, just no, chaos. Just, it was chaos. It, it. it was crazy. Why, why can't there just be two people in the ring at one time? I don't get it. So the first four wins. I thought it was going to be elimination, but it obviously wasn't. Um, anyway. Again, this is just very confusing. It was just a you, you have a You have a way to do something. Um... It works for a reason. It's tried and tested. You do a four tag team elimination match where people tag in. Yeah. You don't have all four guys in the same time. Yeah. It works. That's the reason to do it. I mean, I didn't even want to see a, a four tag team match, let alone a three tag team match. Yeah. I don't know why they have to throw everything into one. They could have... Um, and it just didn't work. I, I was actually very... Dis- this was the start of the end for me for this show. <laughs> because I was... I thought that this match... I went into this show thinking, well, even at, at least if everything else is bad, mm-hmm. this is going to be at least good. And it just wasn't. It was okay. It, no, it, it, was, I mean, it was fine. The wrestling was okay. It was the gimmick let it down. It had so much potential. And you can't... Like, these guys are trying to work. They can't work because there's too many guys to follow. It does, it, but the, I have to say that the closing moments were really heated and fun. Well, um, well my, my, my star of the match was Chad Gable. Um, he can't talk, which we've mentioned a lot now. However, those German suplexes he was nailing. Oh yeah, everybody, and even Ru- he he dead weight lifted Rusev off the mat, who was on his stomach. Yeah, yeah, held him up, throw him back. That was great. Beautiful I, suplexes. I thought well. Gable and Rusev actually came out of this looking the best. Yeah, they did. They looked really good. Kofi as well. Yeah, he, well, he, Kofi always looks that good. kick though that he did on one of the Usos, I think, like sending the motherfucker all the way out the ring. <laughs> That kick, though. Man, crazy. Anyway, right winners. Mm. What'd you give it? Um, Three. Gave it three and a quarter. Okay. So, and we both, we both called the Usos as well. So that, what, so I'm two, I'm two for one now. Uh, Same. We're both two for one. Okay. Uh, So then we go into the women's match. Oh, dude. Charlotte walks in champion against Natalia in a lumberjack match. There was a lot of use of the number jacks. Um, before we get into the match, I just want to say Byron on commentary was fucking annoying as usual. Which they all are. Yeah. But but how did you know which one was Byron? Because I can never tell. But he was. But he was arguing. They're all again. interchangeable. <laughs> but he was arguing again. What was how he they arguing were about? I I don't know. But they were arguing. I think they do that because Vince thinks that people are entertained by it. But no. But in actual fact, it's just very annoying. Purposely drags down the match for me because the. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so the actual match, there was a lot of use of the lumberjacks. 
Rightly so, I guess. Um, there was only one face, Slumberjack. Uh, was there? Yeah. Well, Naomi. Naomi was the well, only face, Slumberjack. Becky, I know Becky Lynch is filming the Marine Six. Yeah, I didn't know. I wondered why she wasn't there. Or the Marines? No, yeah, the Marine Six or Seven with the Miz, and I can't think of any other face on SmackDown. Yeah. This match really showed off the depth of the roster. Yeah. Um. So, like, you're you've got three faces. Yeah, that's and it. one of them's away. Yep. Doesn't make any sense to me. So come which with... furthers the, my idea. I don't really understand why these Riot Squad, Absolution, why all these girls are coming up and all being the exact same gimmick, all being heels. I don't get it. They should have brought those ones up as faces, maybe. Just maybe not even together. Smackdown needs it. Not even together. Just one or two of them. Yeah. So Carmella uh, teases cashing in. Um, I forgot she even had that. So did I. Um... But anyway, she teases she's that, not, but she doesn't do it. not on TV anymore much. No, none of them are really. You see Charlotte every now and then. Uh, so eventually, um, Natalia taps out to uh, the figure four after she tried to hit the sharpshooter and it was reversed. Mm. That was a nice little ending. I, uh, Lumberjack's not necessarily known for their quality. No. Um, but this was a match that still managed to disappoint me. Okay. The, the, I really, really hated this. The the ring work itself was lumbering and dull, and I think that's completely Natalia. I she, recently, uh, maybe it's just my opinion, but recently she seems to have really lost that sort of um, essence of what made her good. I think she's done. She, she just doesn't she care. Se- she really seems to be. The lumberjack stuff was way overdone. Mm-hmm. Uh, the riot squad didn't really benefit from anything they didn't do enough to actually warrant Mm. even being no and the whole thing dragged for so long it was 10 minutes long but it felt like 20 minutes wow I really really didn't like this what'd you give it um I gave it two oh okay but I'm I'm thinking I actually preferred Mojo Rawley versus Zack Ryder so I'm gonna give it a one and three quarter oh I gave it a two and a half oh well there you go then the the moonsault was nice yeah Charlotte's moonsault was nice um like you've been saying for a while, the, the women's division, despite having people keep coming up from NXT, it's really cooled down. Yeah. It's not like it's it used really to be. cooled down. No, I, I really didn't like this. And match. they should have spent way more time. Ruby Wright's amazing, but they should have. She shouldn't be on the main roster yet. No. She should have had at least another six months really developing um, before they bring her. Like I like Absolution on Raw. What they're doing there is fine, but on yeah, SmackDown that, this shouldn't be happening. SmackDown has got more of the problem. Raw Raw still isn't on fire but Smackdown's women's division is really suffering and I think I get more annoyed about this because you know I'm a big Charlotte fan yeah and Charlotte gets ignored every week on TV she gets put in those side split screen yeah. adverts this was your night to finally like actually well, Charlotte give her f- looked good yeah but she, this match. it was like she was it was like she was working she was it was to me it reminded me of the main event she was working by herself yeah Nobody yeah, yeah, I get what you mean her. saying that, yeah. So, uh, post, <laughs> post-match, post Natalia um, does somewhat of a retirement speech. I'm assuming this is just storyline. Yeah, she, uh, she told it. She said on Twitter as a work. Yeah, and um, and she doesn't. She can't cry on cue. That was really no, that was it, real horrible crying. This was, this was awful. It just added to my dislike of Natalia at the moment, which is weird because I used to really like I, her. I, I still like her, but she's her character's annoying. No, but her, she just seems to have completely cooled off. Like she, well, she doesn't. Has. She do, she seems to have lost her uh, lost her talent for a while. She hasn't really had a good run in years. I don't know. She was she she seemed pretty decent to me last year. But um, I think unfortunately she was um, before her time. Like if she was part of the women's revolution, she would have been absolutely amazing. Yeah. But she was she was there just a little too early. But yeah, no, I really didn't like this. So, uh, you want to talk about the the Singh Brothers interview backstage? Did that happen? Yeah, that happened. Anyway, Brizango <laughs> versus the Bludgeon Brothers. Uh, the Bludgeon, Bludgeon Brothers win in quite an expected squash. Squash. Squashed. Um, Brizango got more offence than I thought they were even going to get, though. They did, yeah. No, I noticed that. Yeah. Um, it also went two minutes. Wow. I would have I would have done this from 45 seconds. <laughs> That's a long just squash. Destroy. Um, the bigger news here... After the match, the Bludgeon Brothers get on the mic. Personally, feel everything they've been building towards in the last couple of months has just been destroyed. 
That was the worst promo. <laughs> that was a bad promo. It was bad. That was a bad promo. They, they. I mean, you got two big lumbering guys called the Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah. And they look like that, just, and they beat the guys like that. You don't need to don't tell talk. me. The uh, we're the Bludgeon Brothers. We're here to bludgeon you. You, may, yeah, you, you don't may, need to say that. Make that statement. Um, I, I, but I, remember, well, these were the these were like the enforcers in the Wyatt uh, family. That meant like they weren't good enough to talk. Bray talked yeah. and they just did the damage. I d- really don't know why they made them do a promo. I, I don't either. Um, made no sense. Made on a call. I, 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 I don't usually mention spots, but I was ap- I, I absolutely loved this spot where they um, do a double team on Tyler Breeze and they flipped him over their heads face first into the ring apron on the outside. Oh. It looked it looked amazing. I, it, it looked. It honestly looked like he had just shattered his jaw. It was. It, <laughs> See, I really like them. I like their, what they're doing, but the, the promo really cooled it for me. For me, they need to not talk, and they need to um, change their attire. Yeah. Because they look like they look like those cane action figures that they used to sell in Poundland, you know, and they were called like Main or something, you know. Do you remember uh, those? No, I don't remember those. Oh. So. um... I don't. I don't rank storyline or squash matches. Did you? No, did you rank I, it? I just give it, a squash match. I give a zero, but I. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. But you can't really. Yeah, rate I it. didn't rate it. So, um, oh, you're gonna like this. Um, I gave nicknames to the tag teams. Right. Right. So we got. You've got way too much time on your hands. So. No, you're probably just so mind-numbingly bored. I guess. Yeah. So uh, we got. Yeah, because I did think about this for a good couple, like five minutes. So we got Shorten. Shinsuke and Randy Orton. Oh right, okay. Versus. Well, that doesn't make sense, Ben. Zarwin. I like Zarwin. That's Sammy good. Zayn and uh, Kevin Owens. That's good. Zarwin's good. So uh, the loser. Oh, well, if, if Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens lose this, they're fired. Uh, they won. That's yeah. quite predictable. Yeah. I know. I can tell from your tone you did not enjoy this match. <sighs> it's, uh, um, it... So there's two refs. We got Shane McMahon and uh, Daniel Bryan, and they're both refs. And chaos as as predicted, and then yeah. halfway through the match, they just decide to split the ring in half. One will be oh yeah, one yeah. will be ref of one half, one will be ref of the other half. That was um, a fun little gimmick while it lasted. Yeah, so uh, Randy's got hair now. That just, you just know what that you know what you haven't watched SmackDown, but that literally came out of nowhere. Yeah, but just out, just like no, the RKO. I, 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 yeah, I watched like, the last couple of SmackDowns he, before this. He did. Not have hair one week and then it just appeared magically. I would I would I would say that's a toupee, but he can actually clearly grow his own hair. So I just I have no idea how he managed to grow this much hair in a week. He looks younger with hair. Hmm. Mm. Suits him. Probably, probably keep him. <laughs> no, again, you you seem very bored by this pay per view. You're yeah. shortening tag team names and, <laughs> and spending a lot of time thinking about how Randy Orton's hair makes him look longer. So, uh, so just the intro, uh, entrances before we go, we'll start with the match. Um, Shinsuke has still got his heat. Yes, uh, unbelievably. They were they were singing that song two minutes after. Are it. you sure the song's not o- over though, and not Shinsuke? Possibly the same. The same as Finn Balor. The intro mm. is more over than the actual wrestler. It's a shame, man, because it's WWE are per- personally to blame for making me lose interest in Shinsuke. I still like Shinsuke. I like him, but I used to be into him. Now I'm not. They've damaged him to me. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. And Sami Zayn, I, t- I can't get on board of Sami Zayn as a heel. Because he's still doing that thing where, like... Kevin Owens walks out and then he's just running about like an, like I've got literally an excitable little bunny. Yeah, he's got X pack running people, about. Yeah. It's weird. He's, he's annoying and uh, not in a he's getting heat from me way. He's annoying and like I just don't want to see him way. Yep. Uh, okay, so the actual match. Um, I struggled. Did you find when we were on the fixed camera looking at the whole ring that because there were two refs, you were actually struggling to watch the action? Yeah. I kept paying yeah. attention to the like. Because it was weird. Because and also, too what, many people in the you know world. what you're saying about you've said in, about filmmaking where um, center shots and side your shots, eye lines, yeah, it was now off putting that there was it was it was, was confusing my eyes. Yeah, uh, but 
even if you didn't really watch the action much and you were just watching the refs, there was not much action to watch. This was a really long SmackDown main event. Yes. Um, it was, I mean, generally entertaining. I don't expect it to be on a pay-per-view, though. That's Without that gimmick, it would just be a nothing match. Um, I mean, Owens putting Nakamura through a table was a well-needed shot in the arm. That was great. Um, I enjoyed that. And the crowd, again, like feel so sorry for the crowd. They're really into it. They want something really big to happen. It just doesn't. So um, the ending happens with much shenanigans. Owens uh, throws Byron into Shane as he was uh, going for the pin for Randy to win. Randy gets up and looks like he's going to attack um, Byron. Because they've got history, and the announcers are like, "Oh, they got history." It looks like he's gonna. Do they? I just don't remember. <laughs> um, and then Shane uh, intentionally stops a two count with Sami Zayn about to win, and then they did the exact same Daniel thing. Daniel Bryan fast counts Owens to win. That stopping in the air, it, they did the exact same thing at Survivor Series 1998. And well, that's long enough ago for them to do it again. No, I like <laughs> I like the spot. Um, what I'm saying is, Survivor Series 1998. I can't remember who did it, but it was a heel. If WWE Shane is a heel, one of Shane's meant to be face, exactly. Right? Yeah. If what coming out of this, if WWE think that people are going to treat Shane as a face, mm-hmm. they've got to be joking. Sh- Shane is heel here, and Daniel Bryan is face. Yeah, because yeah. Shane did a heel maneuver, and Daniel Bryan fixed it because he he saw that. And then, this match was being cheated. And interestingly, Daniel Bryan walked out with Owens and Sami Zayn up the ramp. Which is a, three a of independent wrestling fans' wet dream, right? Re- yeah, really. Yeah, you just need to throw maybe AJ in with that. I feel like they've uh, thrown Daniel Bryan a bone. I think they say, oh, you can go work with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn uh, just to please him. Because he's so desperate to get out. Mm. I think they've just they've done that to give him more TV oh, time, so make him more around the ring. I'm just so hoping stuff. this leads to him finally having a match. I don't think it will. I don't think they're going to pass him, you know. Ever. It's just never going to happen. I don't think so. i got one funny thing here. Um, that there was a lot of hands in the air. Right. Uh, Shane, <laughs> oh, right, Shane, with the refs. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cause, but not only, like, you know, the ref puts his hand in the air sometimes, but they pretty much had the hands up in there all the time, like, oh, I didn't touch him, like, oh, nothing's going on. It was both of them. So pretty much 90% of the match, there were two people with their arms just in the air, just like... I, I was... Yeah. <laughs> like this. <laughs> I, I was watching this, and um, Shane McMahon's movements are so exaggerated mm-hmm. that when he does stuff that normal referees do, you pay more attention to it. So, what one thing I want to ask you, and it's not just Shane. Okay. So many referees do it, um, but you just don't notice it because they're subtle with it. Yeah. Every time somebody gives a slap, like a backhand slap or a chop, every time yeah. somebody gives a chop, the referee does a clap. Yeah. Up like that. Yeah. Why? Um, I think it's to signify that it was a legal. It was a legal strike, because in old school wrestling, you're not allowed to strike with a closed fist. You oh. you can only strike with an open fist. So if someone if you ever see like a heel go to punch with a closed fist, the referee gets in their face is like, oh, open fist, open fist only, and will like kind of clap at them, and then when you see a chop like that, he'll go like like that. It was an open. I think. Uh, I think. I, well, that makes sense. Logically, that makes sense. But and, uh, logically, that makes sense, and that's that's if that's true, that's the greatest piece of trivia I've learned. Uh, <laughs> because I, I've been wondering this since I saw the but show. But that comes from my knowledge of British wrestling, where they still play the old school rules a lot, and you can't strike with a closed fist in wrestling. Watching these guys uh, be special guest referees. Um, Made you have a respect for real referees. Or yeah, like. and it sort of opened my world a little bit. Like, the amount of times I've probably seen a ref doing that, but I wasn't paying any attention to him at all. But also, yeah, you just don't pay attention to the ref at all. He just managed just to blend in and hide in the ring. That's crazy to think... That's what I was... I thought that was crazy to think about. And up until a pin count or a, a ring out count happens, you just, you don't see the ref. Like, and then suddenly there he is. I was, think, I was thinking to myself, how many hours have I spent Watching Charles Robinson walk around the room. Yeah, and you just and I, I've never actually looked at him. Just ignored him. 
I thought that was it. I've probably watched more of Charles Robinson on my TV than any other wrestler. Maybe. Or anyone in Quite possibly. wrestling. But in this match, they just took all the attention away. That's all I was watching was Daniel Bryan awkwardly walk around as if he did. I don't think Daniel Bryan's had much training in wrestling. <laughs> no, no, he was. He looks a bit clueless. He looked a bit lost. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, also, um, what I wanted to say was the gu- be- you might not have noticed actually because you're watching the refs all the time. All four of these guys look bored. Imagine they were. They look like they couldn't be bothered. And, and well, I don't blame them. Until until the match wasn't about them. Until the table spot. Yeah, the match wasn't about them. So why the would they? You know, why, why would they bother? Why would Daniel they bother Bryan. to do anything? Yeah, no, I get that. I get so. that. Until until the announcer table spot, there, I wasn't even interested. No. And then the ending. How long did the match go? I think the match was just too long. Um, that's the one that I haven't written down. Twenty-one minutes yeah, thirty-seven I was gonna say, seconds. Because the whole match, the whole match was the the finale, right? Yeah. Where they kept on the yeah, shenanigans yeah, yeah. with the pinfalls. So we went through 18 minutes of... Of of a Smackdown yeah, when main event. We just, yeah, we were just, we just needed that I last mean, four actually, minutes. that does it a disservice. Most Smackdown main events are usually more decent Well, because Smackdown's meant to be the brand which is, like, wrestle-heavy. Not anymore. Rather storyline-heavy. Not anymore. I th- you, nowadays, your best matches are on Raw. Anyway, Strangely. so Sam, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, the, the storyline's going to continue. What did, you, what did you rank the match? Two, three quarters. I for rank, gimmick crew, I ranked it a three because I did I did enjoy uh, some of the Shane Bryan stuff. I mean, in terms of actual wrestling, it wasn't that good. But. I I ranked it a three, but I don't think you're going to allow it. I ranked it an extra half for um, the end, the fast count ending, and then Shane's face just sat on the floor like, "What the fuck did you do?" <laughs> and then no, so and then. Um, uh, Daniel Bryan's kind of walking away with kind of a smug face, like, "Yeah, I, yeah, I did that. I fixed things." And yeah, no. Shane's just staring at him, like, <laughs> "I gave the whole match a half just for that one moment." No, no, that's completely fine because, uh, to be honest with you, I wouldn't have given this two and three quarters if I wasn't taking into account that I enjoyed a lot of that Shane Bryan stuff. Yeah, I just, I just wish they'd done this on a on a TV show. Yeah, or maybe not a TV like. Obviously, Brian turning is 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 big, but they they could have achieved it in a in a better way in which you get a good match and the turn at the same time. Mm. Because this was a story for the sake of a bad twenty minute match. Didn't need that. What could have happened here is it could have had this match on SmackDown, which and we probably would have gone. That was a great SmackDown. We would have enjoyed that on SmackDown. Yeah, and then on a pay per view. I know you don't like gimmicks, but then maybe on pay-per-view, it's a cage match. Oh, Shane and Daniel Bryan, they can't get involved. No, I, Something I, like that. I, I like... That's fine. I like gimmicks as long as there's a reason it for it. It makes sense story. Really. And that, that makes sense. This whole show, uh, we would be watching this and saying, hey, that was a pretty decent SmackDown. Yeah. But it's just not a pay-per-view. Yeah. It's a three-hour It's a three-hour SmackDown. I think all the matches are pretty much thrown together as well quite last minute. It very much felt and like it in the building. I am so glad that was not main event. You thought it was going to be main event. I did. I'm so... When when they announced that it's on, I was so glad the championship is still I, I at the end. I agree. Top agree. Bill. So, the championship match, uh, Jinder Mahal versus AJ. AJ retains. Yep. Which... I didn't call. Called that. I didn't predict that, but I'm glad that happened. I called that. I'm so glad that happened. I, I called that. Um, there was a carpet in the ring. Yeah, this happens every week. Um, That's what Jinder Mahal was. I, I was I was ready for them you to... You clearly don't watch SmackDown. I don't pay attention. <laughs> Jinder hasn't been on SmackDown the last three weeks. I... Well, he's been backstage, but he hasn't he been on the ring. He's kind of there. He's kind of there. Um, I was really ready for them to wrestle on the carpet. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was, I was waiting for that to happen. I don't know whether that's you enjoying things in wrestling that you haven't seen before, or some sort of fetish for AJ Styles. What on a carpet? And a and a big Indian man. N- no. Did you see how steroided Jinder Mahal was? Uh, I'm going to come on to that at the end. His nipple was <laughs> uh, out like this. Okay. At all points. Wow. Like permanently. All right. Well, I'll say it now. Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's hard to no, get it's it fine. out. No, it's just I was going to say like my whole enjoyment of the match um, that I didn't enjoy the match so much so 
that I ended up start. I started googling Jinder Mahal, mm. and I started googling uh, before and after pictures. And I believe at th- three or four in the morning, I actually sent one to you over you Facebook. Did. You did, and I was like, I, "I've, and you're the conspiracy man." But I'm, I'm staring at these pictures. I mean, I was very sleepy. <laughs> I was staring at these pictures, and I'm like, I don't think it's even the same person. Mm. I reckon it's two different people. I don't think it's two different but, people. But why, why on earth would it be two? Why would, why would you replace someone with a jobber? Yeah, I, the dude's just got. Uh, done and uh, gone and done an in- incredible amount of steroids, um, but his face looks different as well. Yeah, because of steroids. Steroids well, change you in well, multiple change ways. Your facial sometimes features yeah, as well. Yeah, the amount he's the amount he's obviously doing. If you did, you see his back. Yeah, he's it's covered in spots. Lumpy and spotty, isn't it? Um, what's this bit called? His like nose is oh, what the Brock muscles. The uh, I've forgotten the actual name of the muscle. Uh, it's on top of the shoulder. Yeah, it's between Those the neck and the shoulder. Those were crazy. They're like, but they like, they're like balloons, aren't they? They bubble. Yeah. It's just they artificial were, muscle. They were bigger than Brock's. They were the, the biggest muscles I've ever seen. But they, yeah, but it area. wasn't connected properly because it didn't. There was a space between the muscle and the neck. The, Which, when you look at Brock's, it comes off the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down I, the shoulder. I mean, those those bits honestly looked injected. That's what. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's maybe where he's injecting them because it's fake muscle mm. because it's not connecting properly. Um... So I wrote that this was the first proper match of the show. Uh, second for me, but well, yeah, well, apart I agree from with you. apart from maybe the opening uh, triple threat, that's every, the only other one. I everything can think else of. is gimmicky or awful. So um, well, I guess even the triple threat is a triple threat. So yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, here. so this was the first like actual match. Um, did you hear someone on the front row actually scream steroids like yeah, like I heard three it. times? I heard it. That was fun. That main that made main camera. I'm glad you picked that up. Yeah, I, I did. So yeah, that means a lot of people have. A lot of people saw that. Why are they not in trouble yet with this? The whole wellness program, but they're pushing a guy that's obviously only getting a push because well, he's see, jacked. I don't, I don't understand how Jinder's getting away with this. No, it must be company sponsored. Whatever he's doing. Yeah, because he, which what the fuck? You are. The, they do random tests and they do tests whenever they see fit to whoever they want to. So they're obviously not that's, testing him because he's their, obviously on it. That's their protocol. They used to test John Cena. But uh, the, he's clearly been given the silent, you're all right to go, mate. You're all right just to keep doing it because yeah. we want to push you. Yeah. So you reckon when they're finally done with him, they're just going to throw him under the bus? Yeah. Which, and it also, Which I think maybe he should see coming. It also shows you that the the... Um, way of living in in and working and thriving in WWE has not changed in thirty years. No, even though they they, they say they they're can trying pre- to make they change. can pretend as much as they want, but they're still higher and push the biggest, most jack guy they can find. Yep. It, it Jinder Mahal being in the main event of SmackDown after being a jobber for so long is telling everybody in the locker room, "You guys better need to." get on steroids as soon as if possible. You were, yeah, if you were jacked, you'd be in the title run. Yeah. So I put here that the um, they were working the leg. It was a classic heel versus face match, um, but saying that it bored me. Yep. Um, I don't know if it's wherever I watched it live and in the UK, that goes on very late and I was tired. It was. It would have been about 3, 3.40 in the morning for you. Yeah, so it was very late and it wasn't a very good match. So I was falling asleep. I was only staying awake by what looking at very old pictures of Jinder, <laughs> comparing muscles. Um, he, you know, he was like Matt Hardy fat, right? When he was a job. Yeah, yeah, he was tubby. Yeah. yeah. Just a crazy amount of stories. Don't get it. Don't get it. Um, I, um, I was slightly, slightly higher on this. I got nothing else to say, so you go. I mean, I was slightly higher. On, I haven't got much to say. Okay. But it's, I, I thought this was the best Jinder match I've seen, ever. Okay. But yeah. I still thought. It was it was still a gender match, and maybe the worst um, AJ match. I don't think it was the worst. No, AJ no, match, no. no I just, but it was the best gender match to be dramatic. purely as a result of AJ Styles working his ass off. He does. This was the AJ Styles show, and he proved it. Mm-hmm. He is telling everybody: you give me anyone, I can pull I out can put a good match at on. least something halfway decent with yeah. them. Um, I was so impressed with AJ here. He's a consummate professional. I think I'm a bit blasé with AJ now because I had that epiphany with he's so great and now I think I take him for granted. I love AJ. AJ's one of my favourite wrestlers of all time. I love him. 
So every time I see him, I'm excited. But I think I take for granted now how good he is. Mm, you do. Because, yeah, he put on a great match with Jinder. Well, yeah, I wouldn't call it a great match, but he put on the best match I've ever seen Jinder have. He, he gave Jinder the best match Jinder can have. And I just like how... It doesn't matter who it is to AJ. He will go out there and work his ass. Which off. is what I'm saying. Because I watched this match. I was like, yeah, AJ was great. Jinder, well, it was a Jinder match. Yeah. But yeah, I think I take for granted actually how I mean, great AJ can um, pull it off. They did like an eight-man uh, main event at Tribute to the Troops. Lasted about five minutes. What, with AJ in? Yeah. And it was like a house show. Yeah. Um, AJ was... AJ doesn't. I don't even think AJ cares whether the cameras are rolling or not. He just puts. He just puts it all he, in. There. He he was one hundred percent in that five minute tribute. I think AJ right? is trying to go down as the greatest wrestler of all time. I think he's he's a contender. He's a contender, but I think he's trying to prove. I'm trying. He's trying to. I, which is why I also think he's happy to drop and pick up titles. He's going to quickly try and get as many world championships as he can. Get himself up there, John Cena level. Think about how far he's. If you ign- if you come as this as a WWE fanboy, you never watched him. Never TV, saw AJ before. If you think about how far he's come, how uh, quickly and how quickly two, he's come, it'll be two years at Rumble, right? AJ, yeah, AJ is already getting to the point where he doesn't need a title anymore. Yeah, and some guys work ten years to and get there, never have it, and they never have it. AJ yeah. is already getting it because he is the best. Um, one thing I also liked about this match was not its match quality, uh, but the way it felt like... One thing I have to say that I like about Jinder is it's old school. Okay. It feels like a... I think maybe this is just me, but yeah. it feels like a not 80s, 90s sort of monster hill where he's... He's not achieving it, but he's. it's more about trying to gauge as much um, of the audience as okay, possible rather than the actual match itself. Yeah. He's just a really old school he's type Trying to hill. work the crowd. Um, and I think he's pretty good at that. But that doesn't, that doesn't equate to TV so well. It also doesn't equate to 2017. No. But that's uh, why I was saying how it's a classic, you know, they worked the leg and I was saying it was a classic face versus heel match. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He does do that. But yeah, no, it, it, there were large, even with AJ destroying his life for this for this main event, there were large parts which were very dull, so sadly. What did, you, what did you give it? I gave it a three. I gave it a three as well. Um, yeah, yeah, so a lot of this show was either disappointing, fell flat, or just didn't feel up to pay-per-view quality. So you're not going to blow it on Blu-ray? <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna buy it on DVD, uh, UMD. No, not even gonna download it for free. No, no. I'm actually quite upset that I paid for it. This technically, this this show this show is out of our minds. I mean, I technically this paid for it. Is over. You did you because you pay for network. Great, great. The show um, as a whole. The the cardinal sin was that it was just boring. I think not enough hap- not happened. There wasn't enough solid matches. It felt like a house show special to me. There was nothing on the show that was must-see at all, or just even really see. There's nothing that I would really go, come out of that and say, yeah, that was decent, I'd recommend that. And it, I, think... I wasn't even looking for a great match. I was just looking for like something, one thing that was solid that I could come out of that show and say, that was decent, Yeah. which didn't really happen. And I think the problem is what WWE has here. Is that there's there's just too many super cards, too many pay per views. Oh yeah, they um, didn't need this at this, all. This show didn't need to exist. This, it didn't need to happen. I mean, the build up was non-existent. It, everybody involved didn't care. And it, they could have just run from now to Rumble, no problem. They didn't need it. Of course, they didn't need it. I mean, Raw hasn't had one since before Survivor Series. And they won't have one until Rumble on the twenty eighth, I think. Yeah. So it's another month. Just call it off. Just it's great. There's no need. It's going to build it. the stories amazingly. I mean, it wasn't even the Clash of Champions. It was a Clash of Champions and a couple of other matches. Yeah, not every match was a championship match, which you can't do in the brand split anymore if you don't have enough belts. It's I don't know. I, I watched this because I had to because I knew we were going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my conclusion. The, so because of the podcast, we watched some. I Very mediocre wrestling. I don't think either of us would have caught this pay per view if we weren't doing. No, nah, I would. I would have watched. I would have read up about the yeah. results. So, um, 
We're not going to do the weekly round, aren't we? We're just going to keep a pay per view special. What was your match of the night? But Oh, the match of the night of the pay per view? Uh, probably the tag match. Mine was the triple threat. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the tag or the triple threat. And what was your worst match of the night? Um, maybe gender. Gender? You gave that three stars. What did I dislike more than gender? Um, Mine was Natalia and Charlotte. Yeah, actually, I think that was mine too. And we're both 5 2 on our predictions. So neither of us have to pretend to eat hot sauce. <laughs> no, I was going to film it. We were actually going to do it. But yeah, no, we uh, we drew. So uh, there's no punishment this time. But Rumble, there's definitely going to be a punishment for Remember whoever, the Rumble. whoever loses. That was last year's tagline, no? I don't understand why that was a tagline. Because they kept on like doing the statistics of old Rumbles. But what has that got to do with the 2017 no, Rumble? It sounded cool, didn't it? It didn't. Remember the Rumble. Cool. It didn't sound cool at all. tagline. Anyway. Obviously, it's aiming towards you. Anyway, we're not going to do a full week in review, but I like just... A couple of topics I want to I want to talk to you about. Okay. The the week in review mainly, mainly Raw. Right. Two things I happened. I've not seen Raw. Yeah, but two things happened on Raw, which we should probably touch base upon. Okay. First one is the big the big big thing that happened at the end. The finale. Stephanie McMahon came out. Oh, there's going to be a women's Raw Rumble. <gasps> <gasps> Thoughts. We called this like a month ago. We did. I don't think it's necessary. I'm not looking forward to it. This is one point where I agree with you because we we had this argument. Um, well, it wasn't really an argument; it was a dispute. Yeah. About how you didn't like these matches because there was no need for the women to be doing them. No. Um, whereas I just said, I kind of agreed with you, but I said it's not really gender specifically. It's not women. It's just the fact that there's no point to them. If there was a point to these matches and there was something behind it, then there would be a which reason is, for the women to do it. Yeah, which is why uh, Charlotte versus Sasha Banks, Hell in the Cell match, were fucking great. Yeah. That was brilliant. Yeah, because it I'm, had a reason and a, yeah, and a, and I'm a not need ag- to be alive. I'm not against that. Like, the women's revolution is great. I'm all for it. And like I'm not being sexist here. And I think um, giving women's matches the spotlight and the main events is fantastic. And even a woman's money in the bank, I can get on board with. But... um. I, I feel like it gets to the point where it's the sake of equality that the women have to do every single match the male side do, even when it doesn't make sense. And as you said earlier... They're going to have an Elimination Chamber match, probably. Well, yeah, no, in a couple of, years. of course, I'm pretty sure. And so what, you're going to have three Elimination Chamber matches on one show? As, and as you said earlier... There's no way you're going to sit through that. That would be crazy. Um, the women's revolution has completely cooled down. This is actually the worst time to have a Royal Rumble. Yeah, they, they Rumble. need to put heat back in in it. And why do you want two Royal Rumbles on the same show? Yeah. The Royal, the whole point of the Royal Rumble is that special last match, the Rumble. Everybody watches the undercard to get to the Rumble because that's what everybody wants yeah. to see. If you're showing me the Women's Royal Rumble at the start of the card... And, and it then, will be start. There's no way that's going to... That would be start, yeah. So th- then you give me two hours and then I go watch the actual Rumble. You've already spot the Rumble. I've already seen one. You've seen a Rumble. A condensed version, but you've seen I one. I don't want to watch two in the same night. No. I don't think anybody that's does. That's going to be a hard watch. Even if the women's Rumble, it'd probably be about 20 minutes, right? Well, there's what? There's only There can't be 30 people in it. There's going to be 20 people at most. I, I think they just about make like something like t- 22... 23 so they they'll make it around 20 then yeah I, I don't know I it's I um I was disagreeing with you before and I wasn't saying it was gender it was reasoning now I agree with you but it I is think, gender I think it's doing something for the sake of doing it yeah if this didn't need to be done it was I mean it was like Clash of Champions but the Clash of Champions didn't need to be done it was just done because for the sake of it. For the sake of it. Which is exactly the same thing as the Women's Royal Rumble. Kayfabe, if you look back on the history of the Royal Rumble, at no point has anyone ever said, oh, this is a male match. There's been, what, five women, female China, competitors? China, uh, Beth Phoenix. And uh, um, Natalia as well, I think. Kong. Yeah, uh, Natalia as well, I think, maybe? Uh, maybe, not? maybe. I'm, I'm sure that sure there's four that. or five people. But yeah. So, so no one has ever said, well, women can't enter this match. Obviously, they don't on a rule, but um, 
and obviously we can't have mixed gender matches anymore. So you can't just put the women in the Royal Rumble, which I personally think would be better. Obviously, you can't do that. I just think it's not a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea for a multiple of reasons, multitude of reasons, because I, the number one thing I can't get past on is having two Rumbles on the same show. And you you can't put that female Rumble on the kickoff, because that's not fair. What if they did back-to-back Rumbles? Oh, what if I they did the Women's Rumble and then Male Rumble straight after? Then you will have ruined the, the one gimmick that every, everybody still tunes in for. Every wrestling fan loves the Rumble. This is the one thing. Even when have. it's a little bit lacklustre sometimes, you still, you still tune in. enjoy it. I'm, I'm not enjoying this idea. Other news what is... the second one? Other news is the Universal Championship. Uh, we called this last week. We literally called this. Yeah. So it's going to be a three-way uh, Brock will defend against Braun and Kane. Yep. Well, it's what it, it is. Uh, I th- yeah, I think that's a, a fairly game plan to go into. Brock, Brock will probably pin Kane, keeping Braun strong, and then you think Braun, Brock at WrestleMania. Uh, something akin to that, yeah. Or Roman will be in this as well. Kane, somewhere. you don't. I mean, you had a money match in Braun and Brock. The only reason Kane is ever going to be added is to keep one or both of them um, looking good. Yeah, and the only reason you keep one or both of them looking just as good as each other is because you're going to have a rematch without the third person. Yeah, so I, I, whether it's Kane's a pretty easy scapegoat here. Yeah, so whether it's for the title or not, I think this is going to be mania. Yeah, I think they've I think they've abandoned their Roman plan with Brock. You think? Uh, well, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Whereas Braun and Brock seem to be building to a program that will, can continue past Rumble. Yeah, I don't know what Roman's doing. Roman wasn't on this episode of Raw, by the way. I think he's injured. I yeah, I know he wasn't scheduled for it, but I don't know. I don't know what he's doing in the meantime. Or an illness or something. I don't think he's. I don't think he's injured. He's just uh, wasn't there for a certain reason. Okay. Uh, Part uh, as well as I thought. Um, Dean Ambrose was injured in, during a match on Raw, but I think it was kayfabe because there was a segment after it where they tag, uh, attacked him. Okay. So I thought I thought it was, but it looked really well. They had like three, uh, two doctors came in and looked at him. And how was Hideo Itami's debut? Uh, he came and helped Finn, right? Right. So Finn Balor was in a um, handicap match against versus the Miz-Taraj. versus Mustaraj, Bo Dallas, and, Kurt, and Curtis Axel, and he was losing quite badly. And then, out of nowhere... Well, no, he, he was winning at one point, and then kind of the numbers game took over. Out of nowhere, Hindu Atami comes in to make the save, and after the advert break, it's now just a tag match. Oh, great. Uh, but Wow. Uh, Hindu Atami did get the win. Welcome to the main roster. It, it was kind of cool. It was okay. What, just going in, going into advert break and then coming out a tag match with Finn Balor and the Miz Taraj? But, but he you looked good. You put Hideo Atami in that. But Atami looked good coming out of it. But he is now. But that's still the most bland, just guys on the show thing on the show. I, I and you throw the new guy debuting onto the main roster on that. Well, that he, just shows he's them. He's debuting on two hundred five. I think well, exactly was... that shows you how much they care about two hundred five. Uh, yeah, I think this was just to give him some spotlight before he goes onto a show nobody's going to watch. I think Atami's been thrown under the bus. Atami was never used that well on NXT either. He's never been had a great push. I don't really understand why. Not that he doesn't deserve it. Anything else of note? Uh, I'm, I'm going to discuss one thing with you from Ring of Honor's pay-per-view. The final battle. Yeah. We won't go through the full show, but uh, main event. Very surprised by the result. Cody Rhodes drops the Ring of Honor title to Dalton Castle. But before that, Cody Rhodes um, walks out with a massive hood and robe on. Does his little in- entrance, right? Throws up the hood... Bleach blonde hair. I saw that. Right? Yeah, after the, wow. after the uh, the brother and the father. Hammerstein right? Ballroom lost their shit. I can, lost well, I can imagine. Their shit. And you, that just shows you how over Cody is. He bleaches yeah. his hair and people take as much notice as when Kanye bleaches his hair. <laughs> so, uh, and but yeah, he dro- which fucks up New Japan's, uh, New Japan's plans. Because Wrestle Kingdom is meant to be Cody versus uh, Ibushi. You're the indie guy. Why has this happened? Don Castle has been a journeyman for Ring of Honor for a long time. I think it's just 
He was also a terrible one-off jobber in TNA. <laughs> and that was recent. That was like this year. Probably just didn't give a shit in TNA. Probably turned up, took a paycheck, left. That's exactly what he did. But, I mean, that's my one experience he's, with him. So I can't take him he's seriously. He's very over in Ring of Honor. His gimmick is. His gimmick was awful in TNA. What was it? Like a magician or something. Oh, no. No, he's he's like... Well, I think his gimmick... I don't really know what his gimmick is. I think it's that he's a homosexual. Okay. But not... One of those gimmicks. No, yeah, exactly but, but it, no, 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 but it's not overplayed. It's just like that Like Velveteen he, Dream or whatever. Yeah, kind of. And he has two valets, which is his boys. Mm, okay. So, Orlando Jordan? Yes, a little bit, okay. yeah. But no, no, like, pouring of the, the cream down his chest. That would be etched in my mind forever. <laughs> no, seriously, the second that you mentioned that, that I got the vivid imagery of it. Oh. Um, I think they're just giving it. I but I don't know why they took it off Cody now. It makes no sense to take it off him now. Maybe it's, Cody's just too big for the title now. I'm thinking maybe Cody's getting too big for Ring of Honor. Seems like. It. I think maybe that he's not going to leave Ring of Honor, but he's he's too big to do as many tour dates to be their champion. If you know what I mean. Well, he's traveling the whole world, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, so, so I'm thinking I'm thinking he can't commit to Ring of Honor to be champion, so now he's just going to do pay-per-views and stuff. I reckon that's probably hitting the nail on the head. I think that's what it is. So they're going to put their, cha- their, their belt on someone who's there every he's single show. He's split too many different ways. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That card was really good. It was very indie, so I'm not sure you'd enjoy it, but it was much better than Clash. Much, much better. I'm open to watching. You should definitely check it out. I enjoyed, apart from the Bully Ray... Well, we won't talk. We, we won't, won't talk. We won't get into Bully Ray. <laughs> so that's that's this week. Do it up. Well, we're not we're not going to record next week, are we? No. We're going to take a Christmas break. I'm um, yeah, so I'm away. And then doing things. And then, so then we'll back next year, or there's another week before. Um, I think we'll be back next year. So we'll be back next year. And I will have watched all of the week's shows. 2K19. I will be back with my segments. 2K18, actually. Yes. I'll, I don't even... <laughs> I, don't know I have you. no reply for that. <laughs> you think in WWE video game terms. Yeah, I've been thinking it's too, It's 2018. For I the think last this month. Christmas break is going to really do you good. Just you got not, You're not going to watch anything, are you? I'm not going to watch any wrestling, gonna watch any wrestling no. for a good week. I think that would do you good. And then, I'll, then I'll reset, hard reset, back on it. What are you going to do with your time now that you're not rumble. watching wrestling? I'll just, I'll just be watching UFC, won't I? So you just you don't change I'll from just swap it out. topless men. That's no, just your like constant. Topless men. i got to have a little bit of topless men rolling about <laughs> with with a fair amount of adult entertainment mixed in. Well, that's... The, thanks, guys. <laughs> um... We don't have that sort of behaviour on our podcast, Ben. Anyway, so we're going to take a week off, and the week we come back, we'll have a full show, a uh, weekly roundup, but a condensed version of weekly roundup. We have a new system to the weekly roundup, yep. which we'll be debuting on our fourth episode. Guess what's back? What's back? On this day! What else are you going to do? Uh, my vault segment. You're going to do your vault segment, yeah. and I'm going to catch up with Benny Corgan, and do some all of his news. Christmas antics, fun news, and i got a new segment for you. It's called What in the World in Wrestling. <laughs> so, Looking forward to it. So this, I, I, actually, I did one for this week, but we didn't get around to it. I, I watched um, half of a show, and this segment is going to be, I'm going to watch something random, something we wouldn't normally watch, just their most recent show, feedback about the product. Not or their most the recent yeah. television show. Or so this week I actually caught uh, Progress. Okay. And I watched a progress show, and um, it was interesting. I'm looking forward to this segment. So um, yeah, but I got progress. We got CZW. We have got Shimmer. But those kind of. So things. you're teaching me different promotions, and I'm teaching you history lessons. But but I don't watch them. Well, I watch CZW sometimes. They're big events. But a lot of the stuff of this, I'm I've never watched progress before. So it was interesting. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and then um, our feature of the week is going to be the greatest conspiracy about WWE ever. Yes, and it will blow your mind. It will blow your minds. Wear diapers. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. All right, we're done. Don't shit yourself. Okay, bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, that too.